Hello everyone, wanted to talk to you this morning about Genesis 1 and 26 and um, talk about um, the creation of the world and how Jesus was in the midst of the creation of the world. If you go to your Bible, Genesis 1 and 26, but before we do that, if we should say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's in John 3.16. Um, and again, it's um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. So I wanted to open up with that scripture, and then we'll turn to Genesis 1 and 26. In Genesis 1 and 26, it said, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeper thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeper thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when God was saying this, he was talking to his son Jesus. And he was telling his son Jesus, let us make man in our image and let him have dominion over everything. So I'm going to create for man a perfect paradise and I want him to have dominion over everything in this paradise. If you go to um, John, I believe it's John 8 and 42. John 8 and 42. Here it is. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So Jesus is telling them that um, God sent him. And he sent him on this earth to not judge the world, but to save the world of sin. That was Jesus' mission. Um, shortly after 8 and 42, if you go to 56 and 58, Jesus says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And if you go back to Genesis 1 and 26, God is saying, And let us make man in our image after our likeness. So he was talking to his son in the garden. And that's just beautiful to know. It's beautiful to know that we are made in the image of God and His Son. We are made in their likeness. We were given a perfect paradise in the beginning. Um, we were given a perfect paradise in the beginning. We walked in the original fruit, which is the fruit of the Spirit, because we were created as spiritual creatures. Walking in the fruit of the Spirit means that we have access to what's in Galatians. Uh, I believe it's. 5 and 22, and I'll turn to that real quick. Galatians 5 and 22, I think it is. Yeah, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such thing there is no law. Um, so, Galatians 5 22 tells us how that we walked in the fruit of the Spirit in the beginning. The point to be made is how we walked in the fruit of the Spirit in the beginning is because we walked in love, we walked in peace, we walked in long suffering and faith and temperance and meekness and gentleness and kindness. 
all these things, this original fruit, was there in paradise, in our perfect paradise. And the reason it was there, some some pointers to show you how it was there, is because when Abra when excuse me, when G excuse me, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he did not let anything separate him from the love of God. He had the first original relationship with him. So he worshiped God and he spoke to God as if he were, just like we are today, spiritual. He had a spiritual relationship with him. He put God before anything. Shortly after that, after that relationship comes, God saw that he needed, he didn't want him to be alone, and he created him to help me. Okay? But before God did that, Adam is in the garden in the perfect paradise by himself, and he's naming all these animals. Imagine man alone with, you know, lions and elephants and bears and all these animals. And man is sitting there and he is naming each and every one of these animals. He's touching them and he's having a relationship with these animals, being kind and gentle to these animals in order to see how their habitat is to know to name them so that's something to sh to think about that we lived in a perfect peace we did not live in fear is actually the point that's trying to be made we did not live in fear because for man to have a uh, dominion over over such animals means that he did not live in fear and fear is not living in love so that's good to know so the original fruit that we walked in was the fruit of the Spirit. But sin came along and sin brought along the fruit of the flesh. And when Eve so desired and she lusted after the fruit and she ate the fruit, that fruit brought along sin. And sin is what separated us from God. The sin separated us from God because when Eve ate the fruit, she disobeyed God, so she wasn't faithful to his word. She walked out of love. She wasn't gentle or meek. None of the things that the original fruit of the Spirit, how we were created to be, did she apply to those. She did not use those attributes. Instead, she used the reverse. And it separated us from love and it brought on sin. The flesh, because she so desired allowed us to walk out of the spirit and it brought on sin. So the great news is that, oh and not only that, but she also walked out of the spirit with her husband because not only did she sin, but she goes and she brings him into sin. So um, the great thing about that is that we have access to get back to the Lord. To worship him in spirit as we originally were created is to worship the Lord in spirit. And you can do so by simply just confessing your sins. And John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And know within your heart that Jesus <clears throat> died on the cross and that he rose on the third day. Um... And that's something to know because that to us symbolizes that our sin, that he died for our sins, that it doesn't matter what we've done, we can go to Christ. We can confess our sins and he is such a forgiving God and such a loving God that he forgives us over and over and over again. But the Bible says, go and sin no more. So... It's a new beginning, and it's a really great relationship. Um, in closing, this is something that uh, I really would like to share with you. It's um, in John 4.13, the little John. Little John 4.13. It says, um, <coughs> Hereby know we that dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Hereby know that we dwell in him, 
and he in us because he had given us a spirit and this is John 4 13 but if you go up one it says no man hath seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfect in us so that's good to know and that's all I have to say for today um, if you care to post any comments or have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email. And that's it. And um, thank you. Bye.